Hello everyone, last month I gave you a code breaking challenge and a chance to win a signed copy of the code book by Simon Singh. Now the code looked like this. So before I give you the winners, I thought I would explain how you might break this code. So first of all, look at it. It all seems to be split up into pairs. So either it's a code that only uses two letter words, so it was something like he is in it. Or, or it was something else entirely. Now, I invited you to look through uh, Wikipedia through the history of codes, and if you managed to get past that one about the Kama Sutra, you might have discovered something called the Playfair Cipher, which actually splits up your message into pairs, and that's what I use. So, let's see how that works. To make a Playfair Cipher, you need a secret square of letters containing a mixed up alphabet. So, a quick way to create one of these squares is just to think of a favourite word and to use it as your keyword. I'm going to use the word awesome-tastic. Now I'm going to fill in my grid there, it's a 5x5 five five grid. I'm going to fill in my grid with my keyword but without repeated letters. So instead it becomes awesome-tick. Now you fill in the grid, uh, you fill in the rest of the boxes just with the rest of the alphabet in order. And because it's a 5x5 five five grid, I'm going to combine the letters I and J. So I and J are, for my sake, the same letter. Now, let's say we're going to send a message like, um, hello world. Okay, so if I take hello world, the first thing I do is I split that up into pairs. Now, the Playfair cipher has three rules. The first rule is, if two letters in a pair are in the same column, they get shifted down one place. For example, uh, O, R there, O and R are in the same column, so you shift them down one place and they become B, Z. That's your code. Uh, another example would be L, D at the end. L, D would get shifted down one place and become U, L. Now the second rule for the Playfair cipher is if two letters are in the same row, they get shifted across to the right. Uh, and that works as well. That wraps around within the row. So another example of that would be OW there. OW now becomes AE, and it wraps around within the row. The third rule for the Playfair cipher, if it's not the same column and it's not the same row, the two letters are kind of diagonal of each other. They kind of make two opposite corners of a box. And what you do is you take the other two corners of the box. Each letter becomes the other corner in the same row. So an example of that would be HE at the beginning. HE now becomes GS. It's the other two corners. But what about that double letter, that double L? You see, for double letters, this doesn't seem to fit the rules. For double letters then, we change one of the letters into an X. So now double L becomes LX. And now we use the same rules. LX are not in the same row, they're not in the same column, they're kind of opposite each other in a, in a little box, and LX becomes PU. Now, if you've got an odd number of letters in your code, or in your message, and everything needs to be a pair, how are you going to fix that? What you do is you put an X at the end. Just put an X at the end, simple fix, now you've got an even number of letters, and everything can be paired up. And that's how the place fair cipher works. It was devised in 1854 by a guy called Charles Wheatstone, but it was promoted by another guy called Lord Playfair, so it, it bears his name. Now, he had a hard time convincing the Foreign Office to use this, because they thought, well, it's a bit complicated. And he said, no, no look, I could teach three out, of the f three out of four boys down the local school, I could teach them to do this in about 15 minutes. To which they responded, Sure, maybe that's true, but you could never teach it to the attachés. That story would be funnier if you know what an attaché is. It's not just a briefcase. Now, the Playfair cipher was used during the Boer War, during World War I, World War II, and you could break it by performing frequency analysis, but you would have to do that on all possible 600 pairs of letters. And to do it would require a much longer message than usual. But for your code, I did give you a clue. I did say that it contained the phrase, 
extra large French fries. Now there are two ways you could split that phrase up into pairs, but it's the first one that's the most interesting because the pair FR is repeated and there's only one place where that would fit into the code, where FR becomes KO. Now from this, you can start to piece together the secret square of letters that made this code. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details. I'll put them in the video description, but let's have a look at a couple of things. First of all, let's look at the pair GE. GE becomes PG in the code. Now, the only way that G can be repeated in that way is if the letters E, G and P were all next to each other in the same row, or maybe all next to each other in the same column. Uh, let's make a guess. Let's say they were all in the same column. For no reason, let's say they were all in the same column. Let's write that down. Now, let's try another pair. Let's have a look at EN. EN becomes GE in the code. So for the same reason, you can now say that N is in the same column as E and G. And you can write that down. Let's take a third pair. A third pair might be IE. IE becomes NA in the code. Now we know they can't be in the same column. All those letters cannot be in the same column. They wouldn't fit. So they can't be in the same column. Uh, they can't be in the same row because E and N are or in different rows. Uh, so it must be the third rule. They must be diagonal of each other. They must be opposite of each other. So now you can fill that in. And you keep going like this and you can keep making these deductions and you can completely reverse engineer the secret square that made the code. And if you do that, this is what you get. And you might be able to see my secret word was unicycle. Now, if you fill the square in and you use it to break the code, you now get this secret message. It's not particularly exciting. When I wrote it, I was hungry, I was tired. Shush sure, sure up! Now, finally, the winners! Now, I'm going to pull some names out of a hat. As you can see, there are no names in this hat at the moment because this bit of the video was actually filmed last week. So, I'm going to pass this now to me of the future. Thanks James. So, here we are. We've got 43 correct entries. Now, you're all winners of course, but particularly the three people who are going to win. So, the extra element of excitement is, can I pronounce your name? So, let's try and pick out three winners. Okay, so first of all, we have got... I've got... Joseph Tibet. Joseph Tibet is winner number one. Okay, winner number two. Let's see. Pay out some more names. Those people. Those people aren't going to win. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got whoop, Thomas uh, Fredrickson. Thomas Fredrickson, winner number two. You're going to win a signed copy of Simon Singh's code book. And finally, winner number three is not those people. Uh, winner number three is. Richard Johnson. Richard Johnson is winner number three of a signed copy of the code book. And that's it. So I'll pass it back over to you. Thanks. And congratulations again to the winners. And if you have been, thanks for watching.